Welcome to Orange Weekly, presented by Krause Health. Alongside Mike Waters, I'm Brent Axe. Coming up, Syracuse basketball coach Jim Beheim thinks there's time for the Orange to improve. Mike and I will discuss that. Plus, with the Camping World Bowl approaching, we'll hear from Syracuse football head coach Dino Babers, who, by the way, does not believe Die Hard is a Christmas movie, because it's not a Christmas movie. Michael? John McLean's wife's name was Holly, Brent. Die Hard came out in the middle of summer, Mike. So did It's a Wonderful Life, Brent. That's about Christmas, Mike. Die Hard is about killing people, throwing them off buildings. What kind of party did they go to in that movie, Brent? Fair point. <laughs> Buffalo, Mike, put Syracuse in a bit of a hole here. And look, the three other times that Syracuse has had four non-conference losses, they have not made the NCAA tournament. So if they're going to do it this time, Jim beheim has got to make a little history. A little history and a little improvement. Uh, these guys got a lot of work to do. Uh, they have just two more non-conference games ahead of them. Uh, the, like you said, the four non-conference losses, uh, they've only lost as many as four non-conference games the three other times. You're talking 1982, 2015, and 2017. Now, the 2017 team got close to an NCAA bid, and they did it by doing really well in the ACC. They went 10-8. and eight. It wasn't quite enough, despite wins over Virginia and Duke. When I look at this team, I think the beginning of the ACC schedule is going to be crucial to them. Can they get off to a 5-1 and one start? And I know that sounds really ambitious. It's a big leap with the way this team's playing right now. But four of their first six ACC games are at home, and they start off ACC play with a road game at Notre Dame. Can they get that Notre Dame win? Because the other road game's at Duke. We're going to put that one aside. Yeah, we're going we're <laughs> to let that one slide for now. But you said it, Mike, they're at home. That has not proved to be an advantage here. This is the first time Syracuse has lost back-to-back non-conference home games since they entered a conference period, the Big East, in 1980. So... Why through 11 games have we not seen any improvement from this team? You know, it's not just the, we haven't seen improvement from game one to game 11. We didn't see improvement from the end of last season to this season. And, and that's what, to me, is even more curious. That you had young players on last year's team and you expect guys from their freshman year to their sophomore years to make a jump. And you haven't seen Marek Dolajai or Barama Sidibe or especially O'Shea Brissett make any kind of significant improvement in their games. And I think that's the reason why this team isn't meeting the high expectations that a lot of people, including myself, I think you, you as well, we all set for this team. Um, you know, Jim Beheim after the loss to Buffalo said that, well, the expectations were based on a team that won three tournament games, they lost 14. Well, yeah, but we were taking into account the fact that guys are supposed to improve. Natural improvement from year and, to year. And right? that didn't happen this summer with some guys, and I think that's what is, is the reason why you've got a 7-4 and four record right well, now. Well, you brought up a position that certainly needs to improve going forward, Mike, and that's the center position, period, no matter who occupies it here. But is there anything Jim Beheim could do to shake things up, to change things, add some plays, step up the tempo? Is there anything? Because Syracuse fans are desperate at this point. They're looking for some sort of infusion to get this team going. Yeah, I don't, I don't know because you've, it's not the NBA. You can't make a trade and pick a guy up off the waiver wire. They don't have injured guys that they're waiting to come back anymore. Frank Howard's been back now for however many games now, seven games. And now he has been playing better. Frank has the last two games. He's scoring a little more. He scored 13 he against Buffalo. Mm -hmm. So I think you're getting closer to the old Frank, and that's a good thing. But in terms of tempo, uh, Frank doesn't push the ball when healthy. If you want to change if some things like that, Jalen Carey might need more court time. Uh, people are clamoring for Marek Dolajai to play more at center. Listen, he's 180 pounds. When he, when he played against Buffalo in the middle, Nick Perkins was just moving him wherever he felt like. You're about to enter ACC play. You're going to see a lot more guys like Nick Perkins than you are like centers from Northeastern and Colgate. So you can play Marek there a little bit, but you have to have better play from Pascal and Barama. Well, Jim Beheim thinks there is room for improvement for this team. Let's hear from the Orange basketball head coach and Syracuse football head coach, Dino Babers. It's time for Syracuse Soundbites. I think when you have the when you have the ability to go from nine to ten, I mean that's 
it's, it seems like a small thing, but it really is a big thing. And if you were just going from seven to eight, maybe not, maybe six to seven, you know, maybe not. But you have an opportunity to go double digits and it hasn't been done in a long time. I think it really is a big deal and it really could set us up for a fantastic 2019. Well, Nate, it's almost Christmas, which means it's football season around here. At least it is now. The Camping World Bowl approaches. Dino Baber signs a new contract. But signing day, the early recruiting period for Syracuse, what was a highlight or two that we saw this week? One of the signing day moments that went viral, not just in Syracuse football circles, but nationally around the country, was Cooper Dawson down in South Carolina, Brent. He brought his good friend Kingsley Feynman on stage with him before announcing his college choice. Kingsley's a paraplegic. He was born with cerebral palsy. Um, very emotional presentation. He whispered in Kingsley's ear his college choice before he told anyone else in the country, and then he slipped on that Syracuse hat on Kingsley's head. Now, the funny backstory is Cooper was actually on campus for an official visit a couple weeks back and left that visit as a verbal commitment to the class, but he wanted to build up drama. He wanted to sort of uh, add a little bit of, uh, of a special moment for Kingsley there for his announcement, and so to include him in, in that moment I thought was out of this world cool. Very cool moment. Make sure you check that out on Syracuse.com if you haven't seen it. Dino Baber signs a contract extension. Nate, not a huge surprise, but certainly you got to compliment Syracuse University for getting that done before the signing period, before next season, and kind of eliminating one of those things. You know, in recruiting, other coaches were starting to say, ah, Dino, he's not going to be around there, but at least for the foreseeable future, he will be. That's the thing, Brent. It, it, the, pur the purpose of the announcement before signing day was to combat negative recruiting. And when Dino first arrived here a couple years ago, it was Syracuse doesn't win enough to go to bowl games. It was Syracuse is going to finish in last place in the ACC. Now, as they turn this nine-win season in, it became, well, Dino's not going to be here very long. You're, if you commit to Syracuse, you're not gonna, he's not going to be your coach for all four years here. So they, they got the extension out of the way. Now I suspect the negative recruiting is they can't win an ACC championship. So that's the challenge, and, and they're going to be ring chasing from here on out. It's always something. And, Nate, the Camping World Bowl approaches. Syracuse University has sold out their ticket allotment. You can still get tickets on you know, StubHub or any of those ticket sites. But there's certainly going to be a lot of Orange fans in Orlando on December 28th. What they will not see, though, is West Virginia quarterback Will Greer. He has stepped out of this game. One of their big offensive tackles has stepped out of this game. Syracuse is going to have their full complement here. So are we still going to see the video game-like shootout between these two teams, even though Will Greer has stepped aside? I think Syracuse is going to be more than capable of putting up, you know, 40-plus points like they have throughout the season. Yeah, I mean, the, the Greer absence is, is obviously a big one for West Virginia. The backup quarterback for West Virginia hasn't thrown a lot of passes this season. There's rumors they might go with a two-quarterback system or at least use a couple options there under center. But, yeah, I mean, there's no doubt that the advantages are all pointed in Syracuse's favor. West Virginia, believe it or not, a lot of people like to, to rag on the Big 12 for not playing defense. West Virginia actually does have one of the better defenses in the Big 12. They have a, David Long, the middle linebacker, can play for any defense in the country. He was the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. So they still have some athletes on that side of the ball, but Greer obviously made the whole thing work, and that's a, that's, it's going to be tough to get another guy ready uh, just to play this one game. Can't wait to see this matchup in Orlando. Nate, thanks to you. Thanks to Mike Waters for joining us. This has been Orange Weekly presented by Krause Health. It's our last show of the year, so Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Holidays to everybody watching, and we'll see you in 2019.